Is it true that your beliefs create your reality? And are beliefs the same thing as thoughts? Those are the topics that I'm going to be covering in this video today. And partially I'll be reading from my book, From Sabotage to Success, but also I'm going to add some of my own commentary, some of my own thoughts and ideas that have come to me since the 20 plus years ago that I wrote the book. There's a saying, words don't teach, experience teaches. And I think that that applies to this concept today about whether or not beliefs create reality. Maybe you've experienced it yourself, those times when your self-talk was one thing, but your outcomes and results were something different. And so from that standpoint, you could say that my beliefs didn't create my reality because I was believing a certain way and my reality didn't match up with it. My name is Sherry and I am a certified clinical hypnotherapist. I have been doing hypnosis since early 2000s and I've experienced hypnosis as a client as well as provided hypnosis services to other people. And I've learned a lot about the concept of unconscious mind. So I'll be weaving that into some of my videos, of course. I have to admit, uh, this ties in, the unconscious mind ties in a little bit with shame. And shame, guilt, embarrassment have some similarities, some overlap. So when I wrote my book, From Sabotage to Success in 2000, actually in the late 90s, I was still at that point where I wasn't quite comfortable telling other people that I was actually involved in hypnosis. So I tried to hide it. It was like my shadow, hypnosis was my shadow. And ironically, hypnosis is one of the places that helps you to find out about shadows. But anyway, we'll get into that on a different video. For today, I'm gonna to read from my book, From Sabotage to Success. I'm gonna read a portion of a portion. And the, uh, how do you say it? The heading is Beliefs Create Reality. Beliefs Create Reality. Beliefs sometimes act as blinders, causing us to ignore what doesn't support our thinking and notice only what fits into our schema of life. For some of us, our beliefs make up our identity. For example, if you're a male who believes that a good man provides for his family and shows no emotion, you may have made a career success and emotional denial a part of your identity. The more firmly you hold on to beliefs for your sense of identity, the more you will refuse to see anything that negates or challenges your thinking. An example of extreme thinking might be found in someone with anorexia. Persons with anorexia believe themselves to be fat. And therefore, this is what they see. They look in the mirror and they block out all information that negates this idea. Even if they wear a baggy size one or only weigh 80 pounds, they will still proclaim that they are fat. And this is what they truly see. What about that? Maybe you, uh, can relate to some part of that. There really is a lot to be said there. I mean, first of all, this idea of our beliefs sometimes act as blinders. <laughs> our beliefs sometimes act as blinders. If you can't see it in yourself, just take a look around you at some of the things that people are saying 
just anywhere, just look any old place and, and see if you can find an example of how beliefs create blinders, how people are living in their own realities and believing their own reality to be the totality of truth. It's as if the other people in the world don't exist unless they're like you. And this is a natural human phenomenon. This happens to a lot of people. If it's happening to you, you're not alone. But there are some dangers involved in this. Now for me, I'm the author of From Sabotage to Success. I'm the person who does hypnotherapy. So I'm gonna narrow in more specifically on those things that have to do with, let's say, um, negative habits, negative beliefs, and how that's impacting your personal life. But sometimes one of the ways to see it is to look outside yourself because it is harder to see it in yourself than it is to see in others. Part of that is what I talked about earlier, this shame, this uh, embarrassment, this guilt. You know, I was uh, a young person in the 80s, okay? In the 80s, we didn't have cameras, we didn't have social media. In the 80s, a lot of us got in a lot of trouble. A lot of us did things that we would want to see on video. For myself, I definitely went down the addiction path. In the 80s, I used heroin, cocaine, and LSD all more than once. And there was a period of time where, uh, especially with heroin in particular, where I felt like I definitely could not quit on my own. No doubt about it, could not quit on my own. Every night I would say, I'm gonna quit tomorrow. Every day I would use it again. So then I went to a support group, a 12-step meeting. It was really helpful, don't get me wrong. Because maybe some of the things I'm about ready to say might think that I have something bad to say about it. Not necessarily, I just want to use it to make a point. When you go to a group of people, whatever it is, I just happen to be talking about 12 steps right now. After a while, everybody in the group starts to see things exactly the same way. They want you to tell the stories a certain way. They want you to say certain words just the same way as everybody else says them. They want you to do certain things just like everybody else does them. And if you don't, there will be consequences for it. It's not popular and it's not even accepted at all to think outside of the box. Even if that box is filled with addicts and alcoholics who are supposedly outside the box. Anyway, at some point, I find myself distancing from that groupthink environment because I was super sensitive to that type of thing after being raised a Jehovah's Witness against my will. I don't like it when groups of people tell me how I am supposed to think. However, at the same time, what I realized as a hypnotherapist is that sometimes there are voices in my head from the past that are telling me how to think, how to be, how to behave and how to act in 2024 based on something I learned in 1984. For example, in some parts of my family, I am still, 40 years later, in druggy prison. Even though the last time I used heroin, it was 1986. <laughs> That's a long time ago. Some of you weren't even born then. But I say it because I know that even if you don't have my same story, you might have some elements of that story. And the element of the story is that you have, you have, is that sometimes you did something a long time ago and then you keep yourself in prison over it 
for a long time, or you form an identity based on that one thing, you come up with a series of beliefs about yourself based on that one thing, and over time it creates an identity. Or maybe it creates an identity because you're around a group of people who are all telling you, this is who you are, this is what you think, this is why you think it, and you better not <laughs> go outside the box or you can't be a part of our group anymore. At the deepest level, we want to be part of the group. So unconsciously, we'll just agree, even if some part of us doesn't quite feel comfortable about it. So I'm talking about beliefs, I'm talking about the unconscious, and I wanna add a little something to this right now before I end this video but I'll go deeper into various things that I've touched on in future videos. Part of what would make me wanna go deeper into some of the things that I touched on is if you comment on it, okay? What is it about this that you relate to? What is it about this that you wanna know more? So we think about beliefs. We say beliefs create your reality. And I think a lot of us, when we hear the word beliefs, we think about the mind. We think about the brain. And we think about thoughts that are going through the brain that we can hear in words, or maybe even see in pictures. But sometimes the belief is felt in your gut. There's gut brain coherence, and sometimes the belief is felt in your gut. So that's a safe way for your body and mind to communicate to you what you really believe, while your ego thinks that safety is thinking like everybody else. Now, I put a lot in that last little part there, so maybe you might want me to unpack some of that, or maybe you might want me to give you some examples of other books and teachings that are out there where you can explore it a little bit deeper. But do beliefs create reality? Yes, they do. Are they always words and pictures that are in your brain that you can see or hear? No. Sometimes they're in your gut and other parts of your body. And sometimes those ones that you can't hear are actually stronger than the ones that you can. So to learn more about how your beliefs create reality and also how you can change them through hypnosis and other methods, stay tuned to this channel. I usually am posting videos about once a week that might be picking up fairly soon. So if you want to stay in the know, hit subscribe and also that bell icon so you can get notifications of all upcoming videos. Bye for now.